Hi everyone, this is Dr. Dan, and I wanted to make a quick video to show you how you can use Autodesk Fusion uh, to design some circuits using the Eagle functionality put in here. So I will give you some links to some other videos that the Fusion 360 team has put out, but I thought I'd kind of give you uh, a quick video on what I have learned and kind of the shortcuts and things that maybe get left, at, left out of the professional videos because I've just kind of learned this stuff recently as well. So let's go ahead and start off. If we open up Fusion, you start off with like the normal drawing uh, part, which we're, we're not gonna start off with when we're doing electronics, right? We wanna make an electronics document. So you go to File, and you go to New Electronics Design. And it brings up this Electronics Design um, document. And so this is where things get a little hairy because when you start saving files, there's gonna be like the design, there's gonna be the CAD, there's gonna be the schematic, and they're all gonna be named like the same thing possibly, and it gets hard to keep them uh, on track. So I think it's important is to notice the icon they use. So this little thing here is, is the design. And so we're gonna save. The first thing we're gonna do is we have a design, so we're gonna go ahead and save it with a name. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a name. I'm gonna put it in a folder. Um, I'm gonna just call it a new project, and I'll call this Simple Electronics something like that. And so uh, the first thing I'm gonna show you how to do is um, a filter. So we're gonna do a low pass filter. This is something you should be familiar with, uh, just a simple low pass filter. Uh, and so now we want to draw this filter um, in our design. So this is our design, there's nothing here. We could add a schematic, we could add a PCB, Right, so that's what we wanna do. We wanna add the schematic first. And so it brings up this format uh, and we would draw our schematic in here. So that is just showing how things connect together. Okay, and then you can see the schematic, so we still have our design is this, and it's over there and it has a blank place for our schematic. But the schematic now is this like square icon and it's currently untitled because we haven't done anything with it, okay? So this is where I might uh, draw my schematic. And so like you can think of a design like over here as having multiple schematics, right? But for most things we're gonna do, we're just gonna have one schematic within the design and that's why it's gonna be uh, pretty simple. And, and sometimes the names get confusing because of that. So when you draw a schematic, you're just basically gonna start by adding parts. And so there's this button to add parts um, and you can find whatever parts you want. Now what I'm gonna do is give you this library, this two, BME214L parts library. Okay, and so all the things I think we need will be in there. Um, you could look at these other things, uh, but I think I've tried to organize to keep it simple by keeping everything in the BME214L parts library. However, when you first open th Fusion 360, you won't have it. So you'll have to open the library manager Okay, and it has all the uh, parts or all the libraries in your design, which we have none because we haven't added anything. We have all these that we call in use, which are over here uh, in our parts library. And then we have a bunch that are available to us, right? And you can tell there are a bunch available to us, okay? Um, and so when you're going to add that 214L parts library, which I've already done, you're just gonna hit this browse button and you're gonna find the library folder that you download from the Canvas website. And you're gonna open that and it's gonna become a library and then you can click on use it. Uh, so I just wanna show you how this works. Um, so I'm gonna start off, we're just, instead of making a like PCB for a, a low pass filter, we're gonna make a simulation for a low pass filter, similar to Tinkercad. So to do the simulation, it's called Spice, is the electronic simulation that we use. So I'm gonna use this, um, this library called ng spice simulation and you can search for it just by typing site search and I can just hit use okay and so it moved it into the in use area so we could load over here and it's in there I can close this and now my ng spice simulation is over here so now when I want to add a part I can add the parts from the ng spice simulation to know that they're going to work and like I said in my 214 L library I've kind of like, what I've done is copied over parts from like wherever we need them so that we can just grab from here. Okay, so I'm gonna grab from here to prove that it works. 
Uh, the first thing we're going to use for our NG spice simulation is this voltage source. And again, I, I copied that from the NG spice into our parts. And so I click on it, left click on it. You can place it as many times you want, but after you left click and place once, you hit OK, and it's there. Okay, and then we know a filter has a resistor and a capacitor in it. So I'm going to go ahead and add a part. Again, I can focus on the resistors and capacitors here that I already included in our parts library. If I wanted, I can choose the resistor and capacitor from here. Um, I just want to show you the difference though. So this one, um, it has a model of, or a, a drawing right there. Uh, what I did actually is I went ahead and added like a footprint and a 3D model to the capacitor and kept the same spice model. Um, and so that's the difference between the parts library and like the spice simulation. Um, so again, we could grab these from either. I'm going to grab the capacitor from, from here. I'm going to go ahead and stick it in there and hit OK. I'll zoom in, use my mouse scroll wheel to zoom in. OK, now we want to add a resistor and then basically complete the circuit. We have to give it a ground, right? Some place which we're considering ground. So I'm going to go add part. Again, I have my resistor in here. Um, it also, I added like the, uh, the 3D model into the spice simulated resistor. Hit OK. Stick my resistor there, hit OK. And now I just need to add the ground, which again is, I just copied from spice, but the ground's not really anything, uh, so there's not a 3D model there. I'll put my ground here, hit OK. And now I just need to connect all these things together, right? And so this is the connect, this net button. Um, there's some other options here. I don't know. I just, I don't worry about that. Use the net. It will work fine. Right. And so you can do some bendies if you want. It's just in this circuit, right. It's easy enough to make connections. So you basically click once on each end for that. I'm going to move this all the way. I'm going to click there and I'll click there, click there. And then if it, if it's not, behaving like you want, like it's trying to do this instead of the other way, right? I could always click an intermediate, intermediary click down here and then drag over to that one. And the last thing is I'm going to connect my ground to there. And it's saying merge that into the to supply net zero. Yes, that means you're actually connecting it to ground. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so now we have our circuit. Uh, and now the only reason I'm building this is not because I want to make a PCB out of it. I want to run a simulation with this. Okay, so we just need to provide some values here. Um, so if I want to provide a value, well, okay, so I'm done with the net, so I have to hit OK, or it's going to tr keep trying to draw. Like you have to, this is where things get tricky. You can name stuff by clicking on, like the plus is where things are, right? So I can give it uh, different values there, right? If I want to give it, change the name and, and change how it's displayed, oops. I didn't want to do any of that. Um, so what I actually did was, I don't know if you saw that, I changed the the position from bottom left to bottom center, and that's what moved it. Um, but if I want to do something with like the actual resistor itself, I have to click on that plus. And so I select it. Again, I can change the name of that resistor if I wanted. I'm not going to worry about it. But I go down and I want to give it a value. Right, so I want to say it's a 100 kilo ohm resistor. Okay, and so this is similar to what we uh, would work in, in, in class is when we had a 100 kilo ohm resistor. And I'm going to put in for the capacitor now, I'm going to select that. I'll put in a 100 nanofarad capacitor. Okay, now we just have to give it a voltage source, or voltage, right? So. This is a little bit tricky, right? We could give it a value of voltage, um, but that's, this is not really what you need to do for the, for the um, spice simulation. And so I'll show you what you have to do for this. If I right click on this, it says analog source setup, and that's what I need to do. And so the analog source setup, you can give it a DC value, you can give it an AC value, you can give it a transient function. Okay, and this is, Things get a little weird here, right? It depends on what you're going to do as to f as far as uh, what which of these you want to do. So at first, we're going to start with the transient function. And so I'm going to give it 
Um, yeah, I'm not gonna give it an odd offset. I'll give it an amplitude of five, a frequency of one. Uh, delay and data, I'm not gonna worry about. I hit set value. And you can see it's saying it has DC zero, AC zero, and it has this sign function. So we set this thing up to be a, a, uh, a function, right? So it's a transient function, it's a sine wave. Now what I need to do is I select everything and I'm gonna right click on the back of one of these and put add model. And this is where I'm checking my spice model. Okay, and so uh, for my voltage source, it needs to be an, in there's a lot of things you could choose, but I want it to be an independent voltage source. I already set up my value, so that's gonna be okay. Uh, you can see these all have check marks by them because they're all set up well. If they didn't, I would have to map um, pins to, to or, or models to what they actually are. Um, so like the the resistor model, right? There, I could load a model if I want. I need to make sure the pins are mapped correctly. Um, all that stuff is is possible to do, but because I have all this set up for you guys pretty well as far as that BME parts library, you don't have to do a lot of this. Okay, so we have our model set, and now we just wanna simulate it, right? We wanna see what happens. So one of the things we wanna do is look at the output voltage here. So look, right, we know what the voltage is gonna be here, so I'm gonna stick a voltage probe right there, right, like right at that node. I wanna see what the voltage is between that capacitor and the ground, basically, right, which is, that's our V out, that's what we're trying to measure. And so now I can just hit the simulate button, and it's gonna ask, what kind of simulation do you want? So operating point is a DC simulation, right? It doesn't do much of anything for the filter. So we're not gonna bother with operating point. There's DC sweep, so you can give it different amplitudes if you wanted of DC current. There's AC sweep where you can give it different frequencies of AC current, and there's transient. So we set up that transient function, that sine wave, right? And so this is just saying number of points, uh, temperature, some things are temperature dependent. Certain things, as they heat up, they change their properties. We're not gonna worry about that for our stuff right now. And you just wanna give it a start time and a stop time. Um, and so our frequency we're giving is uh, one hertz. Um, so I think, you know, maybe if I can see maybe 10 waves of this, you know, I'll, so I'll start at one rather than start at zero in case there's any transients, and I'll go to 10 seconds. And so we would expect to see um, you know, nine sine waves here. So I hit simulate. Right, and that's exactly what we see. We see this one hertz signal for uh, nine seconds. Okay, and so it worked out really well. It's, it's uh, amplitude is five. That's what we'd expect. So now I want to uh, change my uh, frequency, right? Because I want to see if this filter is working. So I'm gonna right click on this analog sort setup Okay, instead of one hertz frequency, I'm gonna go ahead and set this at like 25 hertz. Why not? Set value, right, it's gonna be different now. And now I want to simulate. Again, we're gonna to wanna to do transient. Okay, so I'm actually gonna reduce the time on this because I don't wanna see 25 wiggles per second. That would be a lot, um, you know, for 10 seconds. So I'm just gonna simulate for like two seconds from one to three seconds. What simulate? Right, and we can see what happens now. With this signal, uh, our voltage is no longer five peak to peak, right? It's only going to about two peak to peak. So our filter is working as we expected. It's attenuating this higher frequency signal. Okay, so that's the same thing we could have done in Tinkercad, right? So why are we going through all the trouble of doing it here, right? So the other thing we could do is we could look at like what happens across different frequency ranges. Right, so now I'm gonna to go to my analog source setup. And instead of having a, a sinusoidal function, I'm gonna provide it just an AC value of five volt amplitude. Set that value. And now I'm gonna run this simulation. And instead of a transient simulation, I'm gonna run an AC sweep. Okay, and it's saying, where do we want to start the frequency? Where do we want to end the frequency? Let's, so let's say we wanted to see this filter working. We're going to go from one hertz, I don't know, we'll go to up to 100 hertz, right? So this is, it's going to do this AC frequency sweep. The AC input we're giving is five volts, and we're going to go for, um, from all the way from one hertz to 100 hertz. So let's see what happens. 
Okay, and so this is like that Bode plot that I had showed you, right? We're up here at five volts. As you get to the cutoff frequency, we lose, right? Uh, voltage and eventually it gets way down here when you're up here it's attenuating the signal quite a bit right so this is cool we can use you know the spice simulation built into it uh in order to evaluate our circuits right and so you guys are going to be building cir filter circuits and so this is one way you guys can use it to evaluate circuits